Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. V back with another casted game of Age of Empires 3 in what I have been promised is an action-packed back and forth barn burner of a 2v2. And while it is not the highest ELO game, it is promising to be very entertaining. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. We are on the map Sud. And I do have some thoughts on this map, but before I get into those, let me introduce our players in the northwest corner of the map, playing in the color blue as the Spanish. We have the lovely gentleman who submitted this replay, none other than the one, the only, General Spades from the Age of Sun Bros. Shout out to you, sir, for providing this replay for the public. We are eternally grateful. And in the southwest corner of the map, we have his teammate in the color yellow playing as the United States. It's none other than Steven Sundin, which I'm just gonna call Steven for the remainder of the game. And we do see General Spades getting his three settlers in. Meanwhile, Steven not quite getting that first card yet. What is he gonna send? Ooh, we have French immigration on the way, the CDB are coming. Meanwhile, their opponents in the southeast of the map playing in the color red as the Lakota. We have Mr. Robot 117, who we will call Mr. Robot. Does not have his first card yet, but will have it very soon. And his teammate in the northeast of the map playing as the Portuguese in the color purple, if I can get my camera to work. It is Rod Roar EV567, who we will call Rod. And he is sending Fatorias. Meanwhile, what do we have from Mr. Robot? Still hasn't sent that first shipment. Come on, Mr. Robot. There it is. The three settlers are on the way. Okay, Sud, what do I think about this map? Well, we do have a lot of unoccupiable space, a lot of real estate that cannot be built on. So what you do with these middle islands in the uh, center of the map is going to be crucial, especially this big island. And we do see Lakota putting down the early trading post. And I think whoever seizes this middle and seizes the resources in the center of the map, lots of coin mines, lots of hunts, is going to have a distinctive advantage. Meanwhile, we do see a little partner play here as it looks like General Spades picking up the 185 XP, which for Spain is just going to be a disgusting amount of shipments. He does have two stacked up, not sending either, so not going with the early capitalism. But we do see one, two, three players all have a trading post. Only our friend, the United States, does not have one. So... We will try our best to look at these decks and see how they are oriented for a 2v2. But right now, we do see our first attack of the game on poor General Spades, Sisue si Pueda. Uh, I think she's going to go down here. We have the Lakota Chief Coughing Clown. Oh, my goodness. And an African Vagabond chasing her down. It looks like she is not going to get back to her base in time. And her teammate, Steven, is on the other side of the map collecting... What might be 20 coin? No, he's going to pass it by. But meanwhile, we don't see anything too crazy other than General Spades stacking up a couple shipments. But we do see the Portuguese player is getting up to age two very quickly. And Robot also over halfway there sending advanced market, which gets the market wagon and better resources, which why would he want that? Are we going to be seeing some slinging? I don't usually see slinging in Age of Empires 3, but hold on. Let's take a look at Portuguese's deck. Oh, this is a very heavy late age deck. We could be seeing some slinging, ladies and gentlemen. We might be seeing our Lakota friend getting the port up to age four very quickly, but that is a wild conspiracy theory. We are going to see Port put down his middle town center in that center island, and I do really think they want to seize map control as quickly as possible. And uh, we are seeing the market come down from the Lakota player. That early market is going to be very nice for him. Get his upgrades. Meanwhile, looks like Steven and General Spades getting up to the second age significantly later. Meanwhile, we do have General Spades sending 300 wood, 700. No, he's sending 300 wood twice. What? I don't know if I, dude, you have 700 wood in your deck. Okay, uh, maybe he's going for some sort of early aggression with crossbow pike. 
No, double stable. <laughs> okay, so I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. And uh, we have 300 wood coming out from the Spanish player, 600 wood total, following it up with 700 coin. Meanwhile, we see Portuguese also sending 700 wood. We see the American player sending Slater Textile Mill and five regulars. So I have not seen a forward base from any of the players so far. We do have the town center coming down for Portuguese, very close to the American base here. Wow. That is one screen away from these stables. Double stable from Spanish here. Is he going to go double Hussar? I think they're going to go Hussar regular here, which is actually a really good composition for them. Regulars, of course, very, very effective against cavalry. And then we do see that the Hussars will be able to deal with any early infantry that comes out from Portuguese. But I don't think we're going to be seeing too many units from Port or Lakota. Maybe just some bow riders to hold off any early cav raids, but... They might be just going straight for age three and possibly even age four. I mean, look at this. Lakota already has the resources needed to age. And it looks like Rod has already clicked the age up button at the six minute mark. So we are seeing some really quick aging up. Only 11 villagers for Portugal. Meanwhile, 19 for the U.S., 19 for Lakota and uh, a solid 18 for Spain. But we are going to see double Hussar pop out of the Spanish player. So if they can catch the Portuguese player early enough, they might be able to do some lasting damage. However, if Port is able to get up to H3 and get out some of those deadly Portuguese Dragoons, this pressure might prove pretty futile. But he is going to be able to see this coming from his second town center. So hopefully he will have time to adjust. And the Hussars are going to siege the town center, which... I actually think might be good for Portugal. It's going to buy him some time to get into age three and continue to collect resources, though he does not have any military buildings down at this point. Lakota also starting to get some infrastructure down, a corral just now coming down, but we can see the effects of this quick age up. We do see that the United States base and the Spanish base do have much better infrastructure than the opposing team. And now the Minutemen and the regulars are here. So now this town center is in a significant spot of trouble. And we even see state militia, more Hussars coming out. This is a very large army from the Spano, Span, Span, no, Anglo, no, that wouldn't be it. Uh, the Spanish American <laughs> team. I can't believe it took me that long to think of that. Uh, but the second town center going to go down, possibly a little bit overly ambitious from Rod, putting down that town center when they were going to age up fast. Perhaps maybe putting it closer to your original base would have been better. But even this TP going to go down from Lakota. So it does seem like the Spanish-American, there I got it, Alliance, is going to be seizing this middle island as quickly as possible. I would be interested to see if they put down some infrastructure there uh, just to gain that control. But meanwhile, what is Lakota doing? Well, Lakota is sending five rifle riders, which are going to be very good against the age to Hussar. Meanwhile, we do see that Rod is getting town militia, which I think is a little bit weird seeing as he only has one town center, but I guess that works. Meanwhile, the bow riders trying to hold off, but with this many militia and regulars, it's going to be very tough for this cavalry to do anything. And we do have to remember Lakota cavalry, very expensive. He has to be very careful, try to isolate those Hussars. But if the American player, if Steven is being wise, he will keep his infantry next to spades Hussars so that they cannot get cornered by these rifle riders. But these rifle riders will melt these H2 Hussar. One going down very quickly, more Hussar coming out, muskets coming out from the Portuguese player, which honestly, I don't know if that's what they need, seeing as there are so many American infantry. Um, maybe some Dragoons would be better because then both the Lakota and the Portuguese army would be very mobile. Meanwhile, Port is about to get into age three. The U.S. probably won't be far behind, sending 700 coin, getting his market upgrades. General Spade just continuing to pump out Hussar. No ambitions of aging at this point for him. And we do see, oh, it was, I, did, I think I saw the Takala soldiers. Are they there? Yes. Okay, so the three Takalas are going to come out. They are going to do a number on this infantry, but it might not be enough to save the Lakota Post. We might see a really, really early uh, base kill for the Spanish-American army. The Casadors have come out. The Tacola soldiers are involved. They are going to do a number on this American infantry. Are they going to be forced to retreat? No, they are going to continue to 
Oh my goodness, they're gonna continue to siege down the town center. I'm sorry, I was taken aback by just how many US infantry were dying there. And the Hussars are not reinforcing at all. They're going straight for the TC. It is gonna go down. The Lakota settlers are now vulnerable, but there is enough stuff here for Portugal and Lakota to wipe out this army. And I don't know who necessarily won that trade. We do see the town center for Lakota go down, but at the same time, it was at the cost of almost the entire Spanish-American force. There are some infantry here, but all three Takala soldiers. Nope, now just one, but doing a huge amount of damage. And the choice by Spades and Steven to persist in taking out that town center, um, while it did stop the Lakota economy, it did cost a huge amount of military assets so we'll have to see what happens from here we see more hussar and rods joining from spades which is going to be fairly useless against what portuguese and lakota has out now three organ guns coming out from uh rod and those are gonna have to stay very close to the lakota army otherwise those rods will beat them down pretty quickly but the rods going down the hussar going on what looks to be a base raid but it does look like Rod's done a fairly good job protecting his villagers. Where are his hunters? Where is his food? Oh, man, these food villagers are really, really exposed. And we can see the Lakota army quickly doubling back to try to catch these Hussars because there is a cookie jar. And if those Hussars get into it, we could see substantial damage to the economy of Portugal. Meanwhile, Portugal is at... 14 vills. Oh my goodness, their economy is still so small. If they lose these vills, that's like, that's almost their whole economy in there. Um, meanwhile, what do we have? 32 vills for the United States, 18 for Lakota, and 24 for Spain. So we see tech versus economy here, ladies and gentlemen. We have two players in age three. Meanwhile, we have the other two players, which have a substantial economic advantage in villagers. Meanwhile, it doesn't look like General Spades or Steven are planning to go to age three anytime soon. They certainly don't have the resources. Steven now sending Hamiltonian uh, economics. Okay, interesting. I always forget what that does. Oh, it just, it improves your market. Awesome. Okay, so similar to the card that Lakota sent, the advanced market. But uh, I really don't know what the next step is here for Spanish and the United States. I think maybe to age and just kind of fall back on this economic advantage. I mean, the pressure worked, right? You now have a substantial villager lead. Maybe you try to age up and even out the tech front a little bit more before you push in. However, there is a large army here of very elite rifle riders and casadors who have the veterancy upgrade as well as the organ guns. So now it's the Spanish army that is being overwhelmed and perhaps we are going to see the Portuguese and the Lakota strike back in a big way. They are targeting the Spanish player and Steven is still, no, Steven has just clicked up. So he is now going up to the third age. General Spades, uh, not going to the third age. So, oh wow, he's not even close to aging at this point. He's got 70 food and about 500 coin. And villagers going down here. The Spanish, I'm, I'm kind of worried about General Spades here. He's producing more Hussar, which if they can get on these organ guns, that will be quite useful. But they're going to go down so quickly to this army, especially these anti-cav. And there is nothing coming to help from the American base. He does have some regulars and Minutemen, but they are not moving at all. Um, possibly want to, uh, to save them for the third age and maybe even get them upgraded. But one stable going down, two stable going down. A lot of infrastructure for the Spanish base is now starting to fall apart. And with Spain stuck in age two here, it could be pretty devastating for the Spanish American team. They did have the early advantage. They did take the Lakota base. And we can see that uh, it looks like Robot is starting to gather up some wood, but he really needs to get some, he really needs to get, I think he needs to get all of his villagers onto wood and get a town center built as quickly as possible. It seems like he's trying to maintain unit production and get a TC at the same time. I think the play is you've bought some time with this attack, get a town center up and get some villagers out before you fall even further behind. Let's take another look at the villager count. It is 36 for the United States, 26 for Lakota, 32 for Spain, 
and still only 18 for Portugal, which is kind of amazing seeing as he has two town centers. So I don't know if he's just not been producing. We'll have to watch at the end. The Minutemen coming out, but still, all three organ guns are alive. And while they are not the most effective siege units, they are quite effective. And now the American army, the cavalry's here, boys. But it is still an H2 army, regulars and Hussar. But there is enough Hussar here. And with the regulars targeting the rifle riders, maybe they hold out? I don't think it's going to be enough. No, look at how quickly those regulars are going down to the Casadors and the organ guns. Not a single organ gun going down. More Hussar coming out from Spain here, but again, you're throwing wet noodles at the brick wall that is the rifle and bow riders. That analogy was horrible, but hey, we're going to go with it. And more Hussar coming in. What a shock. Um, they might be able... Okay, so they're finally getting these organ guns down, but at what cost? I mean... Five Hussar, that's a thousand resources. That is a huge investment to get rid of three organ guns. And now we even see some club warriors. Shout out MFD uh, for those club warriors. Um, but now it looks like it's the Spanish town center, which is at risk of falling. Trying to keep track of what they are sending right now. We do see the American player shipping in the 54th Massachusetts. I think it might be a little bit too little too late. But we do see that the bow rider count and the rifle rider count is starting to collapse here. More rifle riders reinforcing. But the Portuguese army has been pretty well dealt with. And as I say that, more reinforcing Casadors on the way. We do see some veteran sharpshooters, which are going to be very good against this anti-cav. And I don't know if the Lakota wants to pursue that. And the Club Warriors putting in a final last stand. But, ah, uh, yeah, you can see Lakota and Portugal. They are really tempted to continue sieging this town center. But they have almost no siege potential in this army with the loss of the organ guns. Does look like Lakota has gotten down a town center. Villager production can continue. And I really think Portugal needs to focus on getting some bills out with those two town centers. And, uh, wow, what a lot of action. General Spades, if you are watching, sir, you were not lying when you said it was going to be an action-packed game. Meanwhile, America shipping Pulaski's Legion. So we're going to see some uh, Ulans, 12 Ulans on the field, which if they can kind of degrade this anti-cav, that could be very effective. But he's going to have to use it wisely. Meanwhile, Mr. Robot sending in the Wakina rifles and General Spades still not in the Third Age. So... Uh, really behind on tech. 26 vils for Portugal, 40 vils for the U.S., 28 for Lakota, and a solid 34 for Spain. So the economic advantage still on the side of Spain and the United States. But that attack by the Portuguese and the Lakota certainly shifted the momentum, though I don't think this game is over yet. I think with the economic uh, advantage that Spain and America has, with America now in the third age, able to send some pretty powerful shipments. Yeah, um, I, I think this is still anyone's game. Now, I think Lakota taking this middle island is a really smart idea, especially as the resources on their starting halves are starting to thin out, especially on Spain and America's sides. We're seeing a drastic lack of food here. Uh, although Portuguese and Lakota also don't have a lot of food to speak of. So now it is the game of map control. And check this out. Two barracks coming down for Portugal as well. More Hussars coming out for the United States. And uh, wow, I think he's just going to go for a huge batch of maybe heavy cav here. He's going double Huss on top of these Ulans. And I don't know if, if Lakota is going for a Wakina rifle switch. This might actually prove really, really valuable. And another town center going up for America here and an outpost. We see, uh, yeah, they're starving for food, starving for coin. And I don't know. I, I honestly don't know who's in the lead here. I want to say that Spain and the United States still have a slight lead just because of how many villagers they have compared to the other side. I mean, right now, Stephen has 44 vills and Lakota only has 31. And uh, I don't know. Portugal only has 34 and Spain has 36. So... Both players lead their opponents in Vils, but the Spanish army is still so weak. I mean, we have age two pikemen, age two hussar, a very small force of American infantry. And right now, I think Lakota and Portugal, they need to push out. They need to do some more damage here because if they continue to sit back, um, you're going to give the United States and Spain an ample time to recover. And General Spades even using the time to get into the Third Age. So now all civilizations are in the Fortress Age. And we might be seeing some Lancers. We might be seeing two Falconets, but I don't know. 
that is so much light infantry. And with the mass of cav that America's building up, this might be precisely the composition that Spain and the United States are tailored to deal with. And here it comes. These guys guard Ulan. The Hussars do not have the veteran upgrade, but in come the Rifle Riders. Nice job by Steven to target those Rifle Riders. And look at those Ulan just ignoring the Rifle Riders entirely. And more Hussars coming flanking in from the Spanish player. They do have the veteran C upgrade. And we are about to see a light infantry massacre. Ladies and gentlemen, what a turn. And the Ulans are slaughtering the Akina Rifles and the Casadors, they don't even stand a chance. And the Portuguese Lakota army gets absolutely jumpstered by a huge tech switch. And that poor Culverin, <laughs> wrong place, wrong time, buddy. And now we are seeing the momentum shift again. And now with all this infrastructure in the middle of the map, I think it's gonna go down very quickly and that's gonna be a huge loss in wood for Portugal and Lakota. And now two Falconets out for Spain as well, even getting out some missionaries. And once again, the tables have turned. Wow, what a game so far. More Casadors coming out and they are immediately retreating. They do not wanna stay in the middle of the map. We do see an artillery foundry for Portugal, but we need, we need stables. We need dragoons. Where are the dragoons? Oh my goodness. And now all the villagers are migrating because both halves of the map have basically been cleared of resources. But, oh my goodness. At this point, there is such a military unit advantage for the United States and for Spain. And these are no longer age two units. We have guard Ulan, veteran Hussar, veteran Hussar, and falconets. So this is gonna be a really tough composition to deal with. And we're seeing Axe Riders come out for Lakota, which are gonna get some good raiding in, but they are gonna be quickly caught by this army. Maybe should have retreated there and tried to get them around the back and just continue pestering. Don't get them engaged. Uh, but in comes some champion Takala soldiers. No, don't get them engaged. Don't waste them. They're just gonna die so quickly. They're so outnumbered and there's pikemen in that mix. More cavalry coming out, elite rifle riders trying to draw them in. So I don't know, was this some sort of feint? Mr. Robot, tactical genius over here, drawing in the Hussar and uh, maybe a little bit sloppy by spades. They're losing a lot of cavalry for free. And now the Casador armies have been rebuilt, but how are they going to deal with those Falconets in the back? There's a lot of anti-cav here. The rifle riders have to stay away from melee. No, don't get engaged with the Ulans. Oh, those Ulans are gonna do so much damage if they're allowed to get into range, even with the rifle riders. The Casador's frantically trying to avoid the cav, but the heavy cav numbers are now going down. And now we might be seeing another turn yet again. And those Falconets quickly sieging down that war hut. But all of the cav now go down. And man, now all of these Casadors are actually going to be able to do a lot of work. Uh, and if he keeps enough rifle riders, he might just be able to poke down those Falconets before they get in too deep to the Lakota base. This poor Lakota base. These villagers, they just want to gather resources, and they have not been allowed to. The Americans and the Spanish have just not, uh, not let it happen. Uh, there are a few more Hussars in the mix here, but certainly... Uh, you have to be worried about those Falconets. There's just not a lot of cav to protect them. There are the pikes and the regulars, but if those Casadors are controlled smartly, he might be able to pick them off. So what reinforcements do we have? What do we have coming out from Rod? We have Culverins coming out from Portugal. We have more regulars from America. We have more cav from Lakota. And we have Rods coming out for Spain. Um, not necessarily the unit I'd choose, but... It is a unit, <laughs> it is usable. And the Rifle Riders gotta target down these Hussar and the Casadors need to pick off the Pikes. If they use their units well, they might be able to actually take out these cannons. Those cannons so isolated right now, just a couple of Axe Riders would decimate them. Um, and meanwhile, the Americans are just having their way with the Lakota base and now the Gatling guns are here. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be the turn of the tide. Yet again, we have 59 bills for the United States and we have 40 bills for Spain, 28 for Lakota and um, 36 for Portugal. So still a huge economic advantage for Spain and uh, America. And once again, the Lakota Town Center is gonna go down. And if I am missing stuff, guys, I apologize. There is so much happening on the map right now. 
and I'm trying to keep track of villager numbers. We have Gatling guns, we have falconets, we have regular state militia, a couple hussar rods, but now in come the culverins, and they are picking off the Gatling guns, two Gatlings going down, and now it's the Lakota and the Portuguese who are striking back. Good job by the regulars there, protecting the two remaining Gatling guns, but if they're not careful, they will get sniped by those culverins. The second Lakota town center going down, and we definitely need to see more reinforcements here from Spain. Going with Rods right now, and I almost want to see him go for more Hussars, simply because there's just not a lot of rifle riders, and with so much lost economic potential, it's not very likely that Lakota is going to be able to produce rifle riders at a consistent rate. So I think switching back to Heavy Cav, especially since you have the veteran Hussar upgrade, would be smart for General Spades. More organ guns coming out for Portugal, which... They are inferior to uh, Gatling guns, but if the Colves are able to take out the Gatling guns, the organ guns will do work on all of this American militia. And look at this fortress that's being created. Three United States outposts on this middle island now. It's going to be very, very difficult to seize control of this middle part once again. Look how far Spain and the United States are now gathering resources. And I like what especially Steven's been doing here. He's slowly inching his way up, building more town centers, more outposts, keeping his villagers protected. And there's really now only one quadrant that is available for the purple and red team to gather resources. And there is no protection here. So if Spain and America are to attack this sector, I think they would see a lot of success. More outpost wagons going out. And what a really smart trick by Steven here. He's just seizing as many islands as he can so that the minute his enemy's villagers move out there, he will know. But the red and purple army is looking to make a move. They need to seize some territory here or they will be starved out of submission. And culverins, organ guns, casadors, and rifle riders. That's going to be the ticket. And maybe he can try to isolate one of these armies before the other arrives. It does seem like the Spanish and the Americans are a bit separated, but that outpost going down, it does now alert the Americans and the Spanish where their enemies are, but nice job splitting up. They've got the Casadors shooting the rods. No, Casadors shoot. Oh, the Casadors going way too far forward. Maybe a misclick there, but now the Casadors are sandwiched. The artillery is vulnerable and it is going to be decimated and these rods being so annoying. But I think that might have been a misclick on the part of Rod there, getting his Casadors way too far forward and he got them sandwiched in between the cavalry. They weren't able to body block for the organ guns. And now another decisive win for the Spanish-American alliance, though they did lose a lot of cav in that fight. I think it was well worth it. And, oh man, this, this looks so vulnerable up here. If they just push up here, there's no buildings for those villagers to garrison. They could do a lot of damage. But it seems like Spades, excuse me, and Steven are happy to just continue seizing the map, continue seizing resources, and eventually their opponents will be forced to do things like, oh, yeah, we're seeing it now. Mills coming out for Portugal. And there's just really no economy for Lakota at all. He's got no town center. He's hardly got any buildings. Let's check the villager count one more time since we got time. 80 vills for the United States. Holy cow. And he's in the industrial age along with Lakota. Where did Lakota get the resources for industrial? I mean, he hasn't been making units for a while. We now see Tashunki Prowlers, which I guess will be effective against all of this infantry, but I don't know. It, it's looking really, really bleak for Portugal and for Lakota. I think Robot and Rod are just at such a disadvantage in vil count and in map control that it's going to be really hard for them to come back. And now, especially since the Hussars, they have found the cookie jar. And they, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the United States Army just beelines for this corner now. Are they going to? No, but the Lakota Army is. Holy crap. That is a big army of Cav. And what is he going to do? Pulling out his Hussar. Okay. So, looks like Spades is just trying to do some punitive raids, get some damage in. But the Lakota might be able to isolate these Hussar and pick them off basically for free. Although, he did lose a couple of Vils and now his Vils are idle. And I don't know. I think the United States, they need to push up here. They need to choke out this last hold of resources. 
if they want to win the game in the next, you know, three to five minutes here. But if they go for the long, slow suffocation, that also works. But what does Lakota and Portugal do here? They, they really just need to, they need to win a fight badly. They need to restore some control. Oh no, Lakota walking into the US Army here. And does he know? Is he looking? Oh man, we might be seeing another misclick there, losing like five rifle riders for free. And rifle riders are expensive units. You cannot just be losing those. And look at the amount of militia coming out for Steven. He's got four barracks all producing militia. And these guys are veteran state militia. I won't be surprised if he gets the guard upgrade here. He's sending long rifles now. Ton of upgrades have been sent. Um, wow, okay. So I, I really like Steven's play here. I think he's been doing an excellent job. Meanwhile, Mr. Robot continuing. I mean, he's so scared about losing these resources that he can't really move his army anywhere else. He's just kind of combing this one area because it's the only spot he can gather food. And the Portuguese army, it really hasn't grown much larger. It's still just a batch of castors, a couple of culverins, and that's not going to be enough against this much militia. Meanwhile, General Spades continuing to build up his force, going back into heavy cab, which I think is the right call. And now, ooh, I, the United States Army kind of fighting all by itself here. The Spanish Hussars are getting involved, but there are enough rifle riders here to deal with them. And we have to remember, these are uh, age four. No, they do not have the age four upgrade yet, but the Hussars going down so quickly. Meanwhile, the United States Army getting up close and personal with the Casadors, and this is just a bloody fight all the way around. I don't even know who's winning at this point because so many of them are using losing units. Excuse me. I mean, that's that's going to be a win for Lakota and Portugal. It's going to be a good take for Robot and Rod, but quite honestly, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Oh man, Steven even putting down a fort in this bottom corner covering this gold mine. He does not want <laughs> he does not want them accessing any resources whatsoever. But they've won a fight here. They need to push. They need to take back some map control. If they just sit back and wait for the next wave to come, they are going to lose. And now we even see General Spades going into veteran skirmishers. So it looks like they're just going very heavy on light infantry, which I think is actually a good idea since their opponents are going straight light infantry and rifle riders. Yeah, there's a couple of organ guns, but they're not going to make that much of a difference. And culverins are pretty much useless against infantry, even some lancers in the mix. So I, I, I just don't think this is the right move here. I think if Robot and Rod want to win this game, they have to push out. They cannot sit here and just wait for wave after wave. They don't have the resources. If they had the villager lead and the economic lead, it would make sense, but right now it just doesn't make sense. But quite honestly, I don't know what they do. Oh, he's even building estates at this point. Yeah, I, I think it's basically over. They're just, they're so hemmed in. Yeah, and look at this. It's been, it's been like 90 seconds and both the U.S. Army and the Spanish Army are basically rebuilt. I mean, Steven's swimming in resources at this point, uh, as is as is spades, but spades is only at a hundred population. Come on, dude, get that population up, get more units out. Uh, 59 vils for Spain, 48 vils for Portugal, 90 vils for Steven. Holy cow. And 26 vils for robot. Absolutely an abysmal amount of vils for being at the 33 minute mark, but he has been under a lot of pressure. How coming out going to be precisely useless? Actually, no. If they're allowed to just hack at the infantry, they might actually do some good. Skirmishers and Hussars getting involved now, getting on the cast doors. We even have some Lancers in the mix. So many volunteers now up at the plate that these rifle riders are going to be mowed down very quickly. And the artillery just not able to do uh, enough damage to take them out. We're seeing all culverins at this point. No, we have two organ guns still in the mix. And I think he's just going to shoot them down. They just don't care. They're like, whatever. You got organ guns. I've got endless infantry. And I think this might be the last move for Portugal. And Sp oh, no, actually, he's got four more organ guns out. Oh, but we have a second attack here from guard marines. Yeah, I don't know. This this feels desperate. Like, they, clean, they cleaned up this wave, but at what cost? I mean, the reinforcements are already coming in. More Lancers coming in, more Skirmishers, more Volunteers. At this point, it's just a game of numbers. 
just too much stuff. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is the game. What an exciting match. Uh, General Spades was not lying when he said it was action-packed. It was back and forth. I think there were multiple chances for both teams to win that game. I'm really interested to see the graphs and just see how ahead Spain and the United States were, especially in the Ville count. So, to watch that with me, follow me into the post game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the resources tab, and Steven was miles ahead of all three of the other players. We see Spades, Mr. Robot, and Rod, all about 40,000 resources, give or take a couple thousand. And then Steven, United States, 63,000 resources, holy moly. And that really becomes visible in the military tab. 352 American units, 200 Spanish units, 158 Lakota units, and just 148 Portuguese units. But the tab I really want to see is I want to see the villager count. Oh, as I suspected. So we see pretty even at the start, except for Portugal, who 10 tend. And then the United States, really nice job by Steven. Very consistent Ville production. Um, a little bit sporadic for spades. And then just a lot of flat lining for both Mr. Robot and Rod. And especially at the end here, where they pretty much just went into unit production. And obviously, you know, for a lot of this time, uh, Mr. Robot did not have a town center. So we have to keep that into account. But just a lot of time where the economy was not being improved. And that really hurt them at the end game, where we have 90 vills for the United States, 60 for Spain, 48 for Portugal, and just 26 for Lakota. And then in the military unit population, Actually, a lot of fighting. I mean, we can just see how back and forth this matchup was, but you see the longer the game goes, the quickness of the United States and Spain at rebuilding their force uh, just became overwhelming, especially with the United States here. So a really, really fun game. I enjoyed it a lot. A lot of back and forth. Uh, I apologize for the sporadicness of it all, but that happens with team games. So... GG's to all four players. Thank you guys so much for being willing to uh, send it in, General Spades. I really appreciate it. But, guys, I will be back with a 1v1 on Thursday. Until then, have a great day. Have a great life. See you later.